My name is Daniel, aka Hashlips. Today, I'm going to be showing you how we can add stages in the mint cycle of an NFT contract. We're going to be using the low NFT gas contract, but you can actually use any contract that you see fit. If you want to use the same contract, go to the Hashlips repo over here. Go and find the repositories Hashlips NFT contract. Click on the contract over there, and it's going to be this one over here. We're simply going to copy it all, head over to Remix, and create a new file. I'm going to call this maybe NFT stages.sol. Then paste the contents inside of this file. If you don't have a clue what I'm talking about right now, watch some of my other videos where I actually work on that smart contract and work with Remix so that you get a feel for what I'm busy talking about. Alternatively, if you need some help regarding contracts, you can go to the hashtips.online website, click on the Discord button over there and join the Discord server. There are a lot of devs that's willing to help out. But let's jump back into the code and see what alterations we can make here in order to transform this to mint in stages. Before we go on too far, let's look at the anatomy of an NFT contract. Usually somewhere you'll find something like a max supply. In the profile picture instance, there could be 10,000, 3,000, 5,000 instances of an NFT. We now know that there will be no more than 10,000 NFTs in this contract because the parameters does not allow people to mint more than that. The max supply is very important because it indicates the limit and how many NFTs will ever be in existence. So we have to keep it there. But as soon as we open this contract up and pausing it, everyone can mint all the NFTs at once. What if we want to open the contract and not pause it again, but mint in stages? First, we would like the public to mint 2000 NFTs and on a later stage, increase the supply, but not overstepping the max supply, saying that we can mint the next 2000 and so on until we have reached the max supply. Let's go ahead and implement that and test the contract out so I can show you this special use case. Keep in mind, everything I show on my channel is intended for educational purposes only. So don't go ahead and try this just in production yet. Please make sure you do your own due diligence and test it out perfectly fine before you go ahead and use anything. I will not be responsible for anything that breaks. However, let's carry on. So uh, here I've got my variable copied. And the reason for this is I need two variables. One to be the current max supply and the other one to be the final max supply. So I'm going to change this into the final max supply variable. And this one over here, I'm going to change into the current max supply. Now the current max supply, maybe we want to start that off at 2000 and keep the final max supply at 10,000. The next thing we need to do is actually fix the error over here. Remix does not know what max supply is anymore. So we need to replace that. We're going to replace this over here, this variable max supply with the current max supply. We also have to do it over here in the while loop. So where it says max supply over there, replace it with current max supply. Now we are all good. The next thing that we'll need is a function that allows us to increase the max supply or the current max supply, but not overstepping the final max supply. The next thing that we'll need is a new function. So let's go and create a new function, call it set current max supply with a new signature that will take in a supply and be public, but only for the owner. So let's add that modifier. And the purpose of this is to set the current max supply uh, variable uh, equal to the new supply that we are giving it but we will need to put in some parameters so we don't overstep our boundaries. The boundaries that we don't want to overstep is to make sure that the supply that we give it now is less or equal to the final max supply. So in order to 
add that. Let's add our require statement. And then let's say, well, the supply should always be less or equal to the final max supply. But we also want it to be the supply should be more or equal to the total supply. The total supply reflects back to us here in this actual contract. If we can just find it over here, it reflects back to the amount of tokens that's already been minted. So we don't want to be able to set the supply lower than the actual mint. So we need to say that the supply should be more or equal to the total supply. And that's a function, so we should execute that. Great. A function is now complete and we should be able to set our new current supply less than the final max supply but more than the actual minted tokens. We are basically done but what I want to add now is just another function. This function I think we should call it reset and this would be resetting the final max supply and uh, for this we're just going to make it public it is going to be owner only and the special reason why I want to add this function is that if you have decided that the current supply should be the max supply from now on to infinity, we can say reset the final max supply and we can change the current supply into the final one. And that is simple. We just have to set this equal to the uh, current max supply. And this you will only call once the community has decided that this is enough tokens or you want to keep it at this current state and have no more tokens being minted. And we are done. Let's go ahead and test it out. Before I test it out, I would like to set the contract to be zero ether for each mint. Maybe I can increase the max mint amount per TX so we can mint more tokens. And for the pause uh, contract, I'm going to set this to false from the start. This will give us a contract that we can start minting on immediately. In the deployment and run transaction section, I'm going to select the contract, which is the simple NFT low gas contract one, and make sure I'm on a JavaScript uh, VM uh, server or just trying to do this in the browser. I'm going to click on deploy and there is our contract. Before we mint, let's go ahead and just check what is the new supplies. So I want to check the current max supply, final max supply, and also the total supply, the amount of tokens that have been minted. We can now imagine our scenario and open up our mint to the public. People will go and mint some tokens. Let's go ahead and mint us 10 NFTs. Click on mint and it was successful. If we go down and click on the total supply now, there we can see the total supply is 10. Our current supply, our current max supply is 2000 and the final max supply is still 10,000. Let's now say that we want to mint in batches of 50 NFTs at any given stage. So I'm going to reduce my current max supply to be 50. Where we do that is we can go ahead and go and search for this function over here the set current max supply. Now let's do a few tests so we make sure that our boundaries are set in place. I'm going to try and change this to 30,000 max supply. I should not be able to do this and indeed it fails because I can't overstep the final supply. I can also not undercut the total supply that's been minted. So I can't make my current max supply less than 10 in this case. So if I try and do it at 8, it fails as well. This is good news for us. It means our boundaries do work. So let's go ahead and set it to 50 as we intended. Set it and now it is complete. So if we go and check the current max supply, it is 50 and the final max supply is still 10,000. It means that if an individual comes and mints 10, mints another 10, another 10, another 10, uh, there should be 50 right now. There we go. And if they try and mint another 10, it will fail. It means because they are overstepping our current set max supply. We can go and increase this to maybe say the next max supply will be 100. 
So once that has been changed, we will be able to mint again. And there we go. Contract is working as intended. But remember this last function we've implemented? Well, let's say hypothetically, the community is happy with having a max supply being at 100. We don't want to ever be able to change it again. That means we need to set the final supply to the 100. So what we can do is now just search for the button to reset this. And here it is. As soon as we click this, our final supply is now 100. And even if we try and set the max supply back to 10,000, this will fail. It means that now we have indefinitely set this final supply to be 100 and the total supply that has been minted is 60. So individuals will only be able to mint this token up to 100 NFTs. And that is the full contract. I hope you had fun with me in this video. If you did, give me a big thumbs up and subscribe. I always appreciate that and leave me a comment in the section below telling me what you would like to see me do next. If you enjoy the content of me updating smart contracts in little bits and pieces so that it's more understandable, let me know and I'll do more of them. Until next time, see you in the next video. Cheers for now.